Welcome back to the channel here on Sunday night at 9 o'clock. It's been a while since we've done one of these shows, Between Heaven and Hell. And as a reminder, this show was started by the late, great Tanya Derenberger, whose mission it was to provide people with a way of connecting with Jesus Christ before she died. She knew she didn't have much time left physically on this planet. And as an ordained minister, she wanted to help people learn more about what it's like to come to Jesus Christ as a possible option in their lives. So for this show tonight, I want to talk to you about filling the void. And as you know, there are a lot of ways to fill the void. You can fill it with drugs, people do. You can fill it with money. You can fill it with fortune or fame or acceptance. I kind of lump all three of those into one little category there. But none of those is as great as filling the void with Jesus Christ. And I'm going to talk to you about how you can do that with a few Bible verses that I've looked up tonight, okay, or today. You kind of see behind me, it's windy, and this is the remnants here of Hurricane Barrel in West Virginia. Now, we're not getting any rain, and I'll kind of show you just how windy it is right now. We're getting gusts up to about 30 miles an hour, but we're not gonna get any rain. This is gonna subside here in three hours, so it is currently Wednesday, and I am filming this for release on Sunday night at nine o'clock, like I said. Okay, so Romans 5, 5 talks about, it says, because the love of God will be poured out in our hearts by the Holy Spirit. Okay, so God pours out his love into our hearts, filling it, filling that void with hope and love. There's nothing on this planet, and I've talked about, that can give you hope and love the way that filling the void with God can. So you ask, how do you fill the void with God? Well, there's only one way. You accept Jesus as your personal Savior. And through Him, and we're going to talk about that in another Bible verse here upcoming. This is not going to be a very long show. I want to be right to the point with you guys. But by accepting Jesus as your Savior, you fill your heart with hope and love, okay? That's filling the void. And they correlate that with your heart. So I've talked about it. Drugs, they're not going to fill you with hope and love. It's going to be the opposite of hope. Because for a person who has a physical dependency in their brain to keep doing drugs, they're going to steal from other people to meet their needs. If they can't provide enough money to buy those drugs themselves. And money itself, that you know, you can play the lottery, you can hope to get rich. But in most instances of people winning the lottery, most times they squander that money pretty quickly. Everybody comes with their hands held out asking for that money. They're not real friends oftentimes. They just want to use you for your money. So money itself, you know, it's not going... It'll fill the void, but it's not going to fill it with hope and love. People come to you because they want what you have. Okay, so I've talked about how to fill that with Jesus Christ, and that's, I'm going to talk to you about that in Matthew 6.33, okay? It says, Seek the kingdom of God above all else and live righteously. You have to do both. You've still got to live righteously and he will give you everything you need. Okay, so nothing else gives you eternity. But your love for Jesus Christ can give you an eternal life in paradise, which is heaven. Ecclesiastes 3.11. This was a pastor in the Bible who was talking about God has placed eternity in the hearts of men. When we, ha when we covet, we just want more. Okay, so when we covet to be rich or when we covet to have what our neighbor has, say they've got an expensive TV or a grill or a new car that looks really good and you want it because they have it. Well, say you get it, finally. You're usually not satisfied, are you? You usually want more. You're not happy. That's filling a void with a material object made by man. It's not filling your God with, or you're filling your heart with the love of God. That's eternal. That car is not going to be eternal. It's going to break down and it's going to have wear and tear on it at some point. Okay, so this is very important here. This Bible verse from the book of John 6, 27, 30 to 35 from the King James Version. This is Jesus talking, okay? This is his words. Do not labor for the food which perishes, but for the food which endures to everlasting life which the Son of Man will give you because God the Father has set his seal on him. Okay, so Jesus is saying, talking about himself in the third person, he's saying God, as his Father, has set the seal on him. And because he has that seal, 
he is able to provide the food that endures for eternity, everlasting life. It's the only way you can get it. Therefore they said to him, What sign will you perform then, that we may, that we may see it and believe you? What work will you do? Our fathers ate the manna in the desert, as it is written. He gave them the bread from heaven to eat. And then Jesus said to them, Most assuredly, I say to you, Moses did not give you the bread from heaven. For the bread of God is he who comes down from heaven and gives life to the world. And then they said to him, Lord, give us this bread always. And Jesus said to them, I am the bread of life. He who comes to me shall never hunger and he who believes in me shall never thirst. And again, that's John 6, 27, 30 to 35. Most of you have heard that verse by now, but you gotta really think about it. If you come to Jesus, it's the only way you're gonna fill that void and be happy. Drugs aren't gonna do it. Money's not gonna do it. Material items like cars is not going to do it. It's okay to want these things, but when you start coveting them, you're, you're filling the void. Fill that void with Jesus. It's the only way. I mean, and then that leads me into my next discussion about, uh, you all know the month of June was Pride Month for the gay community. And I watched, and, and I had plans of doing this. Uh, Parkersburg had a Pride Festival here. And I wanted to go out there and minister to people. You know, ask them why they were there. And I didn't do it because I didn't think I'd be successful, so shame on me. It's not that I feared getting attacked by these people. It wasn't that at all. I just didn't think I would convince them otherwise. And you kind of see that with this street preacher by the name of Nicholas Browning. He, he did that on YouTube. And he went to these pride festivals and he kind of asked them like why they were there and, you know, kind of challenged them and rebuked them a little bit and said, this is not the way to live. And then they kept coming back at him and they were saying, you're like 40 years old. I'm 17 years old. And what they can't understand is they've been brainwashed to believe that love is lust, okay? They keep saying the phrase love is love. Well, obviously the same word is the same word. Yeah, love is love. But what they're trying to tell you is that love is lust and that's not true. They're two totally different things. Love is genuine caring for another person. Lust is a physical attraction for another person for sexual desires. You, you do not have to lust after a person to love them, to be in a loving relationship with them, and vice versa. You can lust after a person yet not love them at all, and that's called a one-night stand, and people do it all the time, you know? So it just makes you think, why have they been so misled and brainwashed to the point that they can't separate sexual desires from love? You know, it says in the Bible, the three greatest commandments that God gives us are faith, hope, and love. And the greatest of those three is love. That is that agape love that Jesus has for us. We can't love on his level, but we can love other people as he commands us to do. And it is a command. So these people that go out to these gay pride festivals, they're going there essentially for one reason, really. It's to find somebody else of the same gender for sexual desires. And that's why you see them dressed the way they do. Some of them are scantily clad, some of them wearing the, the pride flag around their shoulders, wearing a rainbow ribbon around their head. That's another thing that they mock the rainbow and they don't even understand they're doing it. It's what's been put into their heads. The rainbow really is a pure, a symbol of purity. It's, it's a symbol that God, it's a promise, it's his covenant saying that he will never flood the earth or a region of the earth as he once did when the ark was built. So that will never happen again. And people keep wanting to look at the science of it. And they're, they're like, oh, but rainbows existed before that happened. Well, yeah, of course, when water interacts with light, a rainbow forms. But God used that as his covenant and his promise. So every time you see it from that moment forward, it's meant to be a promise that will never get flooded again, as you can see, you know, out here. We didn't get any rain at all from Hurricane Barrel, but... And those in Galveston, Texas, wish they would have gotten much less than they did. And in Jamaica, I'm sure, and the Yucatan Peninsula. But it's just a way of twisting God's promise and mocking it. And they don't even realize what they're doing. So it's often said that symbolism will be their downfall. And I'm certainly not just saying 
the gay people are the ones doing all this. It's not. It's, it's evil in general, but they've been brainwashed to believe this stuff, and they don't even understand it. So it's sad to watch a street preacher go out there and watch these people try to fill the void with sexual desires. It's not going to lead to happiness. And yes, most of them are young and they just don't understand it. But when you fill that void with Jesus Christ, it's the only way you can have hope and love. It's the only way to eternal salvation. Otherwise, you're always going to be left with more desire. It says it in the Bible itself. So I thank you guys for listening. It's been a while since I've done a Between Heaven and Hell episode. And thanks to Tanya Derenberger, who inspired me to do this. I'm never going to stop doing these. They'll be infrequent, as time permits. But I'm always here for you guys. I appreciate you tuning in. Whether you agree, whether you disagree, everybody's entitled to an opinion. But at the end of the day, you know, the only hope we have is Jesus. And if you realize that today, I encourage you to turn to him. And thank you for tuning in. It's never about us. It's always about him. Thank you again, as always, and until next time, guys, Godspeed.